On this clip, I wanna talk about the differences and advantages and disadvantages of buying a house versus renting. And I think there's good things about both and I've gotten some questions about what should I do? Should I buy a house? Should I stay renting, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanted to touch on those. I'm gonna use just what I know from my life as an example to just kind of lay some things out. But know that what I lay out probably isn't necessarily your situation. So take it with a grain of salt and just take the things that apply to your situation. But let, let me start this off by just running through an example. Like this house here that I purchased, before Kate and I moved into this house, we were renting an apartment. I would say it was middle of the range apartment. It was a nicer apartment, probably 15 years old the apartment was. It was a two bedroom, two bath you know, about a thousand square feet, and it cost us about 1700 a month. All in, I think, with utilities, it was about $2,000, so a thousand a piece, but $2,000 collectively. And yeah, it was a great spot to live. Uh, had its own little workout facility on the campus, had a pool, didn't have a garage, didn't have a lot of storage, et cetera, et cetera, but had everything Kate and I needed. Now, we just moved into this house here, and the mortgage payment is right around $2,100, and with taxes, insurance, and utilities, it's probably about $2,500 a month. So we've gone up $500 a month. So my cash flow every month because of this move has now declined $500. Now, the amortization table on this house, I've looked at it, and it's a about every month starting off, and this gets bigger if you looked at the amortization table, the amount put towards principal right away will be smaller, and as time goes on, it gets bigger and bigger. But right about now, it's I think it started at like 483, so it's right about $500 a month of the $2,500 goes to my equity or my principal, and I bank that as wealth on my balance sheet, correct? So I've lost $500 in cash flow, but that $500 is just going towards, you know, principal pay down. So it's, people would say, well, that's a good thing. And then, you know, 10 years from now, maybe it's eight, $900 a month is going towards the principal pay down. But I want to step back and analyze that for a second. So I've now lost $500 a month and I'm putting it towards a mortgage payment that's in the mid 4% range. And the return on that money versus the return if I took that exact same $500 and invested it in real estate or even the stock market getting six, seven, eight percent which is a better return? Well, if you figure that out, guys, it's a no-brainer. You should, if, if you think you should buy a house because of the principal pay down and the equity that you're gaining every month via your mortgage payment, why, why don't you just take that money that you're putting towards the principal, the extra $500 a month in this case, and in, invest it somewhere? I can't guarantee you you're going to have a better return, but I think you can beat the return of the 4% interest on the mortgage, and then the house will hopefully appreciate some, but I'm also having to pay a lot for this house above and beyond the principal to see that return. Uh, the return that I'll see on this house is in the mid to small single digits, I, I would guess, over the life of it, versus if I took $500 a month and just put it into an IRA, or I saved it up for a year or two and then invested in a rental property. I'm not going to go through the numbers, but I promise you the investment is vastly in favor of you not buying the house and going down $500 a month in cash flow, strapping yourself. Now, the thing that I think other people overlook in buying a house, when Kate and I were in the apartment, if the, I remember the ice machine broke in the fridge one day, it was a phone call and, hey, ice machine's broke, can you fix it? Yeah, we'll be there on Tuesday. Okay, great. Kate and I were at work, they came by, fixed the ice machine. Here at the house, I'm having the worst time trying to get our sprinkler system to work in the backyard. The other day I spent a couple hours of my time trying to figure out the sprinkler system. Now you can't put a monetary value to that, but what is your time worth? 
And people always ask me, I would live in houses I owned that as we were renovating, renovating them. And then I'd still have our lawn team come do my lawn. I am not lazy. I like to mow lawn actually, but I would have them come do my lawn because I valued my time so much that I didn't want to waste an hour every weekend doing my lawn. And having a home comes with a lot of hidden costs. The cost of keeping up the yard. Maybe you have a porch or a deck. Once a year, you're going to probably spend a weekend painting or staining that deck. All the landscaping every spring. Maybe you have a garden, etc., etc. Now, yes, you get, and I hear everybody yelling at me, and this is the part I'm not all that in touch with. I'm speaking strictly from a financial perspective. You get the feel good of that, right? To look at your lawn and say, I did that and it makes you feel good. And I I get that as much as the next person. And to have a home, right? There's a certain value or price tag. Kate and I love to call this our home. And there's something to be said about that. But if you're asking me from a financial perspective, if this is a better financial decision than just us renting, the answer is absolutely not. This, This buying this house was not a better financial decision. I now am responsible for the upkeep of this house, something I'm very excited about. However, it drains me of time and of money. There's hidden costs. I bet you we've only been in this house for like four or five months. I bet you every month I've spent an extra three to four hundred dollars on little things, paint, stain, you know, new furniture, et cetera, et cetera. Expenses I would not have if I was still in the apartment. And I was very deliberate about not having a home up until this point because I didn't want to worry about that. When you get home from a long weekend of doing whatever, the last thing you want to do is like look out at your lawn and go, man, I need to mow the lawn because it's been 10 days and it's getting to be about a foot high. You don't want to do that. When you walk into a condo, even this kind of cuts down on this too, but our apartment, you just walk in and you live and you let the landlord handle it. And you know, that's me in a lot of situations, but I have teams of people that handle that and free your time up. So when you walk in, you're just doing your stuff. Now, Kate and I, we have all these homeowner things that we have to do. Again, super excited about them. We're happy to call this our home, not just the house we live in, but it's a no-brainer, guys. And I don't want, I want to, this, there's a big misconception that your house should be an investment and it's one of the biggest investments. Yes, by the end of, you know, your working career, Hopefully you have hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity in your home because of the mortgage pay down. However, I would like you to think about if you just took that same money and you stuck it in the stock market or in real estate, I would be, if I were a betting man, I would say you'd have a much larger sum if you just took that and stuck it into the stock market. But again, that's strictly from an investment standpoint. Owning a home is a great way to raise a family and to feel pride in the community and talk to other homeowners in the neighborhood, network, etc., etc. So I'm not speaking from that standpoint. I'm just telling you that it, the questions I'm getting, is this a better financial choice? There's a reason I never owned a home that I took care of and that I didn't have a plan for that I was going to move out of. And it was because I ran the numbers and financially it was not a good choice. So just take that for what it's worth. Um, That's our situation here at the house. And I can uh, tell you that from a financial standpoint, it's not a good choice. But again, stages in life change. Kate and I's stage in life has changed. We're very excited about it. And yeah, it was the right time to buy a house, guys. But yeah, hopefully that helps you on your choice and maybe kind of lay some things out. Thanks, guys.